Good morning. In the last episode, I read a book for you called A Tree is Nice. I said that we would do an art activity together. And this is actually my first time doing that. So I'll just take my time and try to make sure that you can see everything that we're doing. I mentioned the things that you would need for this art activity and I've gathered them all together for our time together. First, you need paper to make this beautiful fall leaf. I had some 24 pound copy paper that you use in the computer. And then I have some nine by 12 from a sketch pad. It's a little bit thicker, so that's the one I'm gonna use. I think I bought this at Ollie's, which we have in our town. Uh, you might even find a sketch pad at the dollar store if you need paper to do art activities on. So I'm gonna move that aside and just put the white sheet from the sketch pad here. That's the one I'm gonna work on. It's a little bit larger, so I'll have to make my designs a little larger. You also need crayons. Some people call them crayons. Um, Crayola brand is the kind I have, and I've had them for a long time. They're not sharp. I have four, or I have four crayons um, of fall colors: brown, red, purple, and orange. And then I have an oil pastel, which is another kind of crayon I like to use. I've had these forever. <laughs> This is the kind, also Crayola, and they look like this. They're chubbier, and they have oil in them, which makes them really good for this exercise because we're going to do is something called crayon resist, where um, the paint painted over the crayon resists the crayon part, and so you can see the crayon marks. Um, You'll see, it's kind of magical, really, when you get it done. Also have my watercolor paints. You've probably seen some at your school. And you can purchase these at the dollar store, too. These are a little bit more expensive, but um, the others work just fine. If you don't have the watercolor paints, which you use water... And a little paper cup from the bathroom. Bathroom cups work. And a brush. I have two sizes here. You can see the bristles are a little bit wider on this one. And you can get wider than that. Um, these are not expensive brushes. They also came from, um, one came from the dollar store. The other was a little bit more expensive. But you can choose on that. So let me get my crayons back over here and ready. And then I always suggest you have a paper towel like this one right here in case you have some spills with the water. And when we finish, I'll show you my surface. You see this brown edging here? It's actually a nice sheet that you can purchase anytime you're gonna be painting with art. And it, you know, is. A better place to work when you have water and paint involved. Um, tell you more about that at the end. So we were going to try, oh, oh I forgot, the watercolor paint. If you don't have the, that with the little individual colors, uh, we were only going to be using blue and orange and you can use acrylic, but you would need to put a little bit of this acrylic in a little cup like this add a little bit of water to make it thinner, like watercolor paint. So that would be a little bit more experimental and you'd have to take your time, not um, get too much water, it'd be too thin or leave it too thick. So that's something that you would like to do maybe another time. So here we go. We're going to make this beautiful leaf that reminds us of fall, and I brought two leaves I found on my walk so that you could see two other shapes of leaves. We chose this one because it has a little bit simpler shape to do today. But in the future, you can do other activities with leaves. Um, 
for art and we may do some. Today we're going to do Crayon Resist. So I'm going to move this aside just for a minute and you can see, still see it. And well, let me do one more thing. It might be helpful for you to see me like kind of trace the design with my finger. You see that, that you start over here a little bit and then you go up, over, and down. And then on the sides you have two of these where you go around almost like a finger shape. And the same on the left side, like a finger shape going out. And it, it's kind of a curve up and down movement. When you get here, you need to leave enough space for your stem. If you bring this all the way to the bottom, then you're not going to have room for your stem. So be thinking about that. So you're going to watch me draw this with an orange crayon. So I'm going to get my orange crayon and draw the shape for you. You just kind of watch what I'm doing. The one at the top is a little wider, so I'm going to go wide with that. And I want to go over it again. We need to press down with our crayon because we want it to resist the paint. Then you're going to come out to the side with a finger-like shape. And then another one just a little bit bigger. And remember, we were going to leave a place for our stem. Then we can go back to this side and do our finger-like shape out this way. And another that's a little bit bigger. Remember, we're just kind of doing a curve and then bring that over to the stem. Now, if you don't get it the first time, you can actually turn your paper over and try on the other side. Art is a lot of trial and error. That means you have to try and try again but you'll eventually get it the way you want it. Try not to worry. This one doesn't look exactly like the other one I made, so I could get all excited about that and think that I did it wrong, but no. This is a different leaf, and it's supposed to be different. So if you'll look, this brown line I'm gonna draw is gonna be like the little veins in the leaves. On the back side of them, you can see there are little tiny veins like the blood vessels you have in your arm, the veins in your arm. So we're gonna draw those and we don't go all the way to the top. We start about right here and we're gonna draw all the way down a very straight line. Then we have to do some veins for this part because that's where the water goes to the parts of the leaf. The veins take the water there, just like the blood pumps through your body, through the veins in your arms. And I touched mine that time, last time I did not, so that doesn't matter either. We just keep going, making a new leaf. I might want to go back over it again. Remember, we want it to be really dark, so it will resist the paint. There we go. Now, on the outside of this leaf, we're going to do some designs. I'm gonna pull this up closer so that you can see them. There are um, rectangle, I mean triangles, excuse me, right here, going up and down, up and down. There are slanted lines. It's important to learn these things for art. Um, different kinds of lines you make slanted these are slanted a different way. Then we have some swirls, and that's that one's made with the um, the oil pastel. So we'll be using that just to practice a new tool. And then here's another swirl, and then we have some just squiggly lines. You can make whatever designs you want to when you're doing this. 
I'm going to stick with what I did before. Maybe it won't be exactly the same, but I'm going to use some red and some purple and some of the oil pastel and some orange. And I'm, I'm going to remember again to do them with dark, bold lines. So I could just do some coming from the edge up here. Can make them get smaller. And then I could do some squiggly lines here. And a swirly. I'm just going to go ahead and use my red crayon for a while. And maybe long snake-like lines. I think that's dark enough, but I'm going to go over it. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera. Then how about those triangles? It's just an up and down movement with a point at the end. And then you can make some small ones inside. You know, you could change up the colors a bit in this. You can do however you want. You could even come out with another triangle there. And there, I'll just make this a little different this time. Whatever you want to do, it's your art. So let's see, let's ch switch to our oil pastel and do a swirl over here with that. And a swirl is just like a circle, goes to a smaller circle, goes to a smaller circle. Let's do a couple of lines with this oil pastel here. And Let's just turn, hmm, let's see, I want to do some more squiggles. And some up here, some slanted lines. Those are lines that lean one way or the other. So we could do some going one way, some going the other. You can see this is a bolder mark with the oil pastel. And then we can add maybe some orange swirls. I hope you're able to see my movements. This is my first time doing this. Okay, we definitely want to have some more slanted lines. And maybe some squiggly lines. I think we might need a swirl here. It's just fun to learn the different shapes that you can use in art. I'm going to try just a couple of triangles there. And let's try something different. I think I'm going to do like a purple circle inside there. Just have fun with it. There's no rules. It's your, your way, however you like it. I think I'm going to come in there with a purple triangle there and maybe some purple circles and I could even do some triangles along the side. I think I like this color so much. One more squiggle here. I like for it to be full of color. I could even do a thing like that. Another triangle. A 
Wow, I'm liking that. And I have a lot of space left over here because I did use this larger paper. I can cut that off if I want to or fold it back and I could do whatever I want to do. It's my art and you can do the same with yours. Now the part of painting comes in. And so we're going to use a brush. I'm gonna use the wider one and get a little bit of water on it. And I'm gonna use one of these two colors of blue or maybe some of each. And I'm going to paint around the leaf with the blue. You can see the blue goes around the leaf. And I have to keep wetting my brush. And you just have to kind of be aware of where your red line is so that you don't paint the inside yet. This is very relaxing, painting with watercolors. I might use a little of the other color just to see how much it changes. Not a lot, but I think I like the darker one better. I'm gonna go all the way to the end. You can see how um, the paint is bubbling up on this surface that I have, and I bought this through Amazon. I don't think it was too terribly expensive, but it is good if you're gonna be doing a lot of painting. You see when I didn't put water in my paint, it gets darker. So um, the water and watercolors changes the depth of the color, how dark it is. And you see how it's resisting the crayon, especially the oil pastels. It's not covering them up. It's resisting them. It gives such a nice effect when you get finished. And with watercolors, you can kind of paint both directions, top to bottom, side to side. More water. It's a pretty fast um, art project. And you could do it in several steps. You could do one part one day, and if you run out of time, you could come back and paint it the next. Whoops, I got inside my leaf a little bit, but that's okay. See how it went darker when I didn't get water? Okay, more water. It spreads a lot lighter. That was very light up there. That was the other color, I think. And it doesn't have to be like all perfectly the same. See, it's light in some places and dark in others. Okay, now I need to swish my brush around and get it clean for the orange step. I can still put my brush back in that same water for right now. It's not, it's not too dirty yet. And then I'm gonna choose this orange right here for the inside of the leaf. I want it a little bit darker. I saw a squirrel running to a tree so fast this morning. The first time I've ever seen a squirrel run that fast. The a big gust of wind started blowing all the leaves off the trees and um, I don't know. He just seemed like he was frightened. He took off and ran up a tree as fast as he could. As far as the story that I read, A Tree is Nice, I mentioned kind kindergartners because I used to teach kindergarten, but you know, it's honestly fun to read books like that as an adult to other children that I don't teach anymore, like to my grandchildren or um, someone else's child that's young, 
But, you know, trees and leaves and the seasons, they're special for um, all people, not just children. I enjoy the seasons changing every year. I enjoy watching the leaves fall from the trees. And I love to just go up to the mountains and see the trees change up there. So don't ever think you're too old to enjoy nature or enjoy art. It's, it's something for all of us. It gives us a lot of um, confidence in ourselves to just try projects like this. It wasn't that hard, was it? And it's not perfect, but I like it. I like the colors. I like the designs. I like the way the, the lines show up even after I've painted over it. So um, I hope you'll try this. And if you do, maybe send me a picture of it in the comments. Have a great day.